It's crazy to think that this is sublimation ink on a cotton shirt because it really is like super vibrant. I think this DTF kit is a real game changer for my craft room. Being able to sublimate on any material I want as long as it's light colored is really cool and will allow me to be able to offer so many new products that I couldn't before. Welcome to the ultimate guide for using a DTF transfer film powder kit. What's a DTF kit used for and why would someone need one? What even is DTF and what does it stand for? Because back in my day, DTF stood for something else and it had nothing to do with making crafts. That's what you'll be learning all about today. I'll be answering a lot of questions such as what fabrics can you use DTF transfer powder on? What kind of blanks can you use this kit on? What color materials can you print on? What's the difference between a DTF kit and a DTF printer? What kind of ink do I use with a DTF kit? What kind of equipment and supplies do I need to use this DTF transfer film powder kit? We're going to cover a lot in this video. We're going to unbox this kit. I'm going to show you where to get the best designs for making your shirts. How to use Cricut Design Space's print and cut feature. Clean up and my final thoughts on this product. If you're feeling overwhelmed by all of this, I want you to take a deep breath. It's a lot to learn, but I'm going to break down everything very simple for you. I did a lot of research so that you don't have to. By the end of this video, you'll be an expert in this DTF printing technique. A huge thank you to GoToCraft for sending me this DTF kit to test out and for sponsoring this video. GoToCraft is also sponsoring a giveaway with one of these DTF kits. Stay tuned until the end of this video to learn how to enter. I've actually never used this DTF kit before, so I'll be trying it out for the first time in this video. So you'll be getting a raw, honest review of this product. I'm very curious to see how it works. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Carrie. I share all kinds of DIY projects and techniques from Cricut crafts to laser engraving to sublimation. I have a little bit of everything for everyone. I love sharing my best-selling crafts and helping you learn how you can make money at working from home with your craft business. And I love testing out new innovative products like this DTF kit to expand my craft business. If that sounds interesting to you, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel and like this video. And remember to click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. So what's a DTF kit used for and why would someone need one? Let's go over the basics of DTF. DTF stands for direct to film. Basically, you load a special film like sublimation paper but transparent into your sublimation printer and then you print your design on that film. Instead of heat pressing it directly onto the shirt, you sprinkle a special powder called DTF transfer powder onto the film after it prints. Then you melt that powder into the film and then heat press that film onto the shirt. Think of this DTF kit as a sublimation hack that allows you to print on any fabric, not just polyester. A DTF kit is for people who have a sublimation printer and want to print on materials like 100% cotton. I love sublimation printing, but I hate how you're limited to polyester shirts. With traditional sublimation, the fabric needs to be mostly polyester, at least 55%, with 100% polyester being the best. The shirts also need to be white or light colored. I find these limitations to be very challenging sometimes. Finding 100% polyester white shirts can be difficult and expensive. For example, Michaels carries a ton of 100% cotton Gildan shirts that often go on sale for $2.99 or less while the 100% polyester shirts are around $9.99 and they always seem to be sold out, at least at my Michaels. This DTF kit should allow me to buy the cheap $3 100% cotton shirts that I want from Michaels, like you see here. So if you're like me and like to keep your costs low and your profits high, using cotton shirts with a DTF kit may be the perfect solution to this problem. What fabrics can you use DTF transfer powder on? It's not just cotton. DTF transfer powder works on most fabrics, including silk, polyester, denim, nylon, leather, blends, and more. What blanks can you use DTF transfer powder on? Not just shirts. This DTF powder starter kit can be applied to canvas, hoodies, sneakers, handbags, t-shirts, hats, pillowcases, gloves, phone cases, and more. What color materials can you print on? This is the biggest question that I was wondering. When I was looking over the Amazon listing, I was kind of confused. They showed many pictures of it on black shirts and white shirts and colored shirts. They show a black shirt here with white writing on it and a teal shirt with a colored design. This graphic right here makes it look like this type of transfer powder is only for black fabric and this is a larger capacity for wide application. So it seems to me like it should work on a variety of colors. So I'll be putting this DTF transfer powder to the test. 
and trying it out on three different colored shirts. I bought a white shirt, a pink shirt, and a blue shirt. I'm going to be using multiple designs with different colors to get a full understanding of what this DTF kit works well on. What's the difference between a DTF kit and a DTF printer? First off, this DTF kit is not to be confused with a DTF printer. A true DTF printer is very expensive, like around $3,000 or more. A DTF printer has its own special kind of ink and way of printing that's totally different than sublimation. This DTF kit is meant to be used with a sublimation printer. A sublimation printer is a lot cheaper than a DTF printer. A starter sawgrass sublimation printer is around $600. Or you can convert an Epson to a sublimation printer like I did for two to $300. What kind of ink do I use with a DTF kit? Remember, a DTF printer uses DTF ink. DTF ink is different than sublimation ink and inkjet ink. This DTF kit uses sublimation ink. What's the difference? One huge difference is the $3,000 DTF printers print white ink and sublimation printers do not print white ink. Since sublimation printers don't print white ink, that's why it's best to print your design on a white shirt when sublimating. The same is true for this DTF kit. Even with this DTF kit hack, you shouldn't be able to put your design with white on it on a dark colored shirt because there's no white ink in your design. That's why the picture on their Amazon listing is really confusing to me because I don't think that shirt should be able to be made with this technique. A true DTF printer adds a white layer to the back of your design so it really pops against the dark fabric. This is similar to sublimating on top of white HTV where you have a white background behind your design. With sublimation, even with this DTF hack, any part of the design that's white should appear transparent and not show up unless the shirt is white. Like I said, I'm going to test out this kit on three different color shirts with different designs so we can see what happens. I'm curious how the ink will show up on a dark shirt that has a colored design without white in it. This kit is to be used with sublimation ink, so you need a sublimation printer. You cannot use an inkjet printer with inkjet ink. You could use an Epson EcoTank or Workforce printer, which are inkjet printers, but you need to convert them into sublimation printers by swapping out the inkjet ink with sublimation ink. This is what I did. I converted an Epson Workforce 7210 into a sublimation printer. I know most people convert the eco tanks nowadays, but I converted my workforce a couple years ago and it still works fine, so if it's not broke, why fix it? So to reiterate, the whole point of this DTF kit is to be able to print sublimated prints onto light colored non-polyester shirts such as cotton. What equipment or supplies do I need to use this DTF transfer film powder kit? This kit by GoToCraft is great because it has almost everything you need to get started with this sublimation hack. Aside from what's in the box, you'll need a sublimation printer, a shirt, or whatever blank you want, and a heat press. I would also recommend a well-ventilated room and maybe a face mask because this powder is really fine and might get in the air and you don't really want to be breathing that in. So I put a fan in my window blowing outside. Now that you know all about this DTF kit, let's open it up and see what's inside. We have some instructions, a couple pairs of gloves, cute little dustpan, some thermal tape. This is the bag of DTF powder. Feels squishy like flour. Some tweezers. This is the DTF transfer film. It comes with 20 sheets. A Teflon sheet and a little tray to work on. If you pull out your piece of film you can feel that one side feels very plasticky and one side is more of a matte feeling. You want to make sure that you load this paper into your printer with the matte side being the side you want it printed on. Everything you need to get started is right here in this kit. Now that you know all the materials you need, we can move over to the computer and get working on some designs. If you're working with a white shirt, you can pretty much choose any design you want. If you're working with a dark color shirt, I would make sure to pick a design without any white elements. If you're wondering where to get the best designs for shirts, I always go to Creative Fabrica. They're my one-stop shop for all of my fonts and designs. I talk about them all the time on my channel because I couldn't imagine trying to craft without them. Um, that's super cute. 
I was trying to figure out what designs I wanted to put on my shirt today, so I just went over to Creative Fabrica, I went to Images, and then I went over to T-shirt Designs. And this is where you can find over one million results of perfect shirts that you can sublimate. And one of the designs that I'm using today is from this Sarcastic Sublimation Bundle. If you're interested in trying out Creative Fabrica, I'll leave a link in my video description where you can sign up for a free one month trial. If you love it and decide that you want to get a membership, it's only $3.99 a month or a one-time fee of $47 a year. $3.99 is less than I usually spend buying one digital download off of Etsy. So you can get unlimited downloads for the cost of about one download on Etsy. So the first shirt that I'm going to make is this funny chicken shirt. It says, I don't rise and shine, I caffeinate and hope for the best, which is just about the most accurate thing I've seen on the internet today. I also have 26 chickens, so it seemed fitting for me. The second shirt that I'm going to make is this real cool Papa Father's Day sublimation shirt. I wanted to try out this design because it has no white elements in the design and I'm curious how the colors will show up on the shirt. The last shirt I'm going to make is a second grade teacher shirt for my son's teacher as an end of the year teacher gift. I'm going to put this design on a pink shirt because I want to see how the colors come out on a shirt other than white and black. With their all access subscription, all you have to do is click the big green download button, then a zip file will open, select the PNG file, right click, save as, and save it to your computer. And I'm going to repeat that step with the other shirts. Next, I'm going to go into Cricut Design Space and click New Project. Then go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse, and select the file that I want to use and then click Open. Then click Continue, Apply and Continue. Select the flat graphic, which creates a single layer full color image for print and cut projects with a home printer, just like we're doing today. Click Continue and then upload. This file imported huge, so I'm just gonna resize it by going up here, clicking on width, and I'm just gonna make it like six and click enter. Now I'm gonna upload the other files. So upload, upload image, browse, click the file, open, continue, apply and continue, flat graphic, continue, and then upload. Once again, I'm gonna shrink this down and then upload my last file. Since all the shirts that I'm gonna be printing on are large and extra large shirts, I want my designs to print as large as possible. So what I like to do is just stretch this out big, which is kind of the opposite of what we just did, but that's okay. So stretch all of these out. And then see this exclamation point right here? If you click on this, it says, image is too large for an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper. We have detected that the max size for this shape is this. So you can click auto resize image and it will automatically make your design as big as it will print then cut. So this is as big as we can do it on the Cricut. Now with the chicken, we can do the same thing. Auto resize image. Now we have all of our designs. They're all resized as big as we can make them. So we can go over it and click make it. You need to make sure you mirror your image. So go ahead and mirror every one of them. I'm gonna take a moment to pause here and grab my DTF film and load it into my printer. You wanna make sure that you load this paper into your printer with the matte side being the side you want it printed on. Now I'm going to click continue, send to printer, Select the printer. I'm using my Epson sublimation printer. I'm going to turn the bleed off in the system dialog on and then click print. This screen might look a little different for you depending on which type of printer you're using. For some reason, it automatically goes back to my HP office jet here. So I have to go and click on the Epson, then click preferences, change my paper tray to cassette two because that's the tray I loaded my paper in. You can select your paper type. I'm going to change mine to high quality plain paper. I want the quality to be high and then click OK and then print.
I'm going to be using my automatic heat press by HTV Romp because you need to cure the powder before you heat press it on, which basically means melt it onto the film. On Amazon, they show you heating it in a microwave. I wouldn't do this unless you have a special microwave that you never cook food in. I wouldn't want to mix chemicals and food in the same microwave. Another technique I see people use is hovering an easy press over the design. I don't have an easy press, so I won't be doing that. I've also seen people put it in an oven. Again, I don't cook chemicals anywhere near where I cook my food. The technique that I saw that I'll be using is with my HTV Iran auto heat press. With the automatic heat press, it has this drawer that comes out so I can put my film here with the powder on it and let it hover over the hot plate without actually heat pressing it. Do not heat press this. You just wanna let the film sit underneath the hot plate to cook it, allowing the powder to melt into the film. Make sure you turn the automatic button off that makes your heat press close when you slide the tray in. I read mixed instructions on how long to heat the powder for. The instruction guide that came with it says 150 degrees Celsius or 302 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 seconds. On Amazon, it says 310 degrees Fahrenheit for 120 seconds. There seems to be a lot of differences between the Amazon instructions and the instructions that came in the box. I also noticed in the instructions from the box, it says light slash white fabrics only, where the website made it look like you can use it on all kinds of colors. I'm gonna turn it on and we're gonna set the temperature to 325. So click the temp and then the plus button till it gets up to 325. And then for the time, we're gonna do two minutes. or I guess 99 seconds is the max. While our heat press is heating up, we can start working on the film. So we're gonna open up this tray and our Teflon sheet. This is gonna go in the tray. Then we're gonna take our film and put it with the shiny side down on top of the Teflon sheet. Next, you wanna grab your gloves because we have to use the powder and you don't wanna touch it. Then we're going to sprinkle some powder on it. I almost forgot I need to cut the little markers off of my design or else those little half squares are going to print onto my shirt. So before you put the powder on, cut off the registration marks on your film. I'm gonna grab the film from the top and the bottom and just kind of shake this powder around. I wanna cover the whole design. The powder really sticks to the ink. So it should look something like that. Probably shouldn't have done this on the Teflon sheet actually. So I'm going to move this to a clean piece of Teflon sheet and then just heat it under the top plate. The machine's not going to start counting down because we're not heat pressing it. The countdown will begin when the lid shuts. So you have to time the two minutes just on your phone or something or a clock. And while that heats, I'm just going to clean off this piece of Teflon sheet. That was a bad idea doing it on here. This powder is super fine and it like sticks in between the grooves on the fabric of this Teflon sheet. All right, I think I got it off. So it's been about two minutes, so let's open it up and see how it looks. The powder is supposed to turn into a gel-like substance, which it looks like it has. It doesn't look powdery anymore. So now I'm gonna add some more powder and do it again.
All right, let's heat it one more time for two minutes. It's looking pretty good. According to their instructions, you have to heat press this twice. The first time at 320 degrees for 15 seconds and the second time for eight seconds. And then after two to three minutes, you cold peel it. So next I'm gonna put my shirt into the heat press and then heat it up for about 10 seconds just to get rid of any moisture or wrinkles in the fabric. So we're gonna change this to 320 and then the time to 20 seconds. Then we're going to place this down in the center of the shirt. Cover it with the Teflon sheet. Now we're going to heat press it. I was just reading over these instructions again. I find them a little bit confusing. And it says, after cold peel, then use the supplied Teflon sheet to cover up the top and reheat the pattern. So maybe I wasn't supposed to put the Teflon sheet on when I first started. I'm gonna let this cool for three minutes, then peel this off, then put this on, and then heat it for another eight seconds. All right, it's been about three minutes. It's nice and cool, so let's peel this off. Seems like it's sticking and kind of ripping the decal. I think I need to heat it again. This time I'm gonna do it without the Teflon sheet for 20 seconds. All right, let's try peeling it again. All right, let's cover it and heat it for another eight seconds with the Teflon sheet. Change the time to eight. It's like maybe a little bit of the ink came off on this Teflon sheet. A little bit of the black peeled off on the very bottom, but not much and it actually looks really good i'm impressed that this was sublimated on a cotton shirt now let's see how it looks on the colored shirts grab your design and carefully cut off the registration marks without touching any of the other ink perfect now we can get our gloves on and put the powder on It's pretty easy to tell when it's done or not because right now you can still see the powder. After it's cooked for two minutes, the color turns to shiny and melted, almost like a gel. So you can see now it doesn't look so powdery anymore. It melts and becomes gel-like. When it gets looking like that, it's time to put on the second coat of powder. I would worry less about how long it takes and more about how it looks. If it looks like powder, you need to heat it longer. For some reason, I don't know why, it kind of looks like there's a little bit of black smudging going on, which doesn't really make sense to me because it's nowhere near the black and it's taped down. So I wonder if that ink is on the outside. There's some more down here too. I guess we'll see what happens when I peel it off. If it's on the outside of the transfer sheet, then there's ink inside of my heat press. If it's on the inside, then I don't know how that happened.
It looks like those little black streaks did show up a tiny bit right here. I don't see them very much at the bottom. They're almost invisible. I don't think anybody would ever really notice, but I can notice. I just don't understand how those got there. But the colors are showing up and it looks pretty good. This is how it looks after baking the powder on twice. Looks pretty shitty. You can see all kinds of like flaky powder stuff in between and all the colors faded. All right, so let's clean up our mess. Cleanup was pretty easy. I just used a dustpan to scoop up as much of the powder as I could and I dumped it back into the bag. Then I took the tray, dustpan, and broom and washed it in the sink. The powder did get on some of my craft room stuff like my table, heat press, and phone, but it was easy to wipe off. So my final thoughts? This kit worked fantastically for allowing me to sublimate on a white cotton shirt. It was super effective and I wish I knew about this hack a few weeks ago when I had to make five birthday shirts and Michaels was sold out of the polyester ones and only had cotton. I think this DTF kit is a real game changer for my craft room. Being able to sublimate on any material I want, as long as it's light colored, is really cool and will allow me to be able to offer so many new products that I couldn't before. Now I can sublimate on hoodies, hats, pillowcases, so many things. I no longer have to find special polyester blanks. Colored shirts were a whole nother story. Dark shirts like this Father's Day shirt just don't work. I would stay away from anything super dark, like navy, black, dark purple, anything real dark, it just, it doesn't look good. And that's what the instructions that came in the box says. It says white and light only, which makes sense if you know how sublimation ink works. I just wish that they made it more clear on their Amazon listing because I feel like a lot of people wouldn't know that based on the pictures. The colors on the pink shirt showed up, but they're not as vibrant as they should be. I think it still came out good enough where I can gift it to the teacher, but this kit is definitely made for things that are white or light colored. It's cool to know that it sort of works on this color shirt though. It's not impossible. I think that if you want to use this kit on a colored shirt, you should just pick a design that's like all black or really dark. This way you can still sublimate on a dark cotton shirt without having to worry about cutting and weeding vinyl and heat pressing it and maybe it'll peel off if you didn't heat press it good enough. Now my thoughts on the recommended time and temperature settings. 320 degrees wasn't hot enough to melt the powder in one to two minutes. It took more like five minutes. It's probably because it's hovering under that temperature and not really cooking at that temperature. Like if you're pressing it with a heat press, it would be at 320 degrees, but being a few inches below it, it's not gonna be cooking at that temperature. So I ended up cranking the heat all the way up to 385 degrees on my last shirt and it melted way faster in the one to two minute range that you would hope for. Then I lowered the temperature back down to 330 degrees to heat press it. Overall, I'm really happy with how this product worked. The colors on the white shirt are super clear and vibrant. It's crazy to think that this is sublimation ink on a cotton shirt because it really is like super vibrant. Thanks again to GoToCraft for sponsoring this video and providing this fantastic DTF kit. Now let's talk about that giveaway. We would like to give away one of these fun kits to one of our lucky viewers. Entering the giveaway is easy. All you have to do is subscribe to Cricketer and GoToCraft on YouTube, like this video, and leave a comment below telling us your favorite sublimation project. You must be 18 years or older to enter. The giveaway is open to residents of the U.S. only, and entries must be submitted by Father's Day, Sunday, June 16th. One lucky winner will be chosen at random and notified within 48 hours of the giveaway closing. No purchase is necessary, and this giveaway is not sponsored by YouTube. One last thing I want to talk about, I have had problems in the past with scammers coming on the platform and creating fake accounts that resemble mine. They have taken my logo and created similar channel names like cricket underscore 35252 or something like that. Then they comment on everyone's entries claiming that they won and to contact them. This is a common YouTube scam where scammers are fishing for your personal information. If you happen to see any comments like this, please report them immediately. Mark your calendars and turn on your notifications because I will be posting a follow-up YouTube short on Monday, June 17th, announcing the winner of the giveaway. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more crafting tips and ideas. 
and leave a comment below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.